What's up everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Fly Daddies. Today I'm doing a real review because our rivers are all locked up and it's really been hard to get out fishing. And I've had a lot of people asking about this PC Fun Chaos 60 reel that I use and if it's any good. So let's check it out and I'll explain why I use it and why I like it. So the main reason that y'all are probably checking out this reel, doing your research right now, is trying to figure out if this reel is worth it. Uh, if it's any good for the $58 to $60 price range that you see it sold for. Uh, and that's kind of why I got it. You know, I got my first one and I was like, man, this is a pretty cheap reel. I'm looking for just a, another fill-in reel. It's a little bit bigger than my Abu Garcia C3s. You know, I just don't have much line capacity on there. And I'm starting to fish deeper water. So I saw this on Amazon where probably most of you have seen it for $58. And... Uh, it's like, well, I'll give it a shot. It can't be that bad. It can't, I probably won't be that great, but you know, it's worth trying. And, uh, so I got it and I, I put it through its paces this year. Well, over a year, uh, I fish at least once a week, sometimes more, especially in the summer. Um, but I fish year round for big catfish. Um, I've definitely put it through its paces and I think I can give an honest review on this. All right, everyone. So I've had this reel for exactly one year. I just looked it up. I bought it January 25th of last year, and that's the, it's the 25th today. Uh, this reel has really surprised me. Uh, you know, it was a $58 reel when I got it. It's still somewhere around that price range. And I thought that it would be a good reel out of the box, but it would probably get a little rough over time. Uh, the bearings would wear out. The drag would probably wear out. And honestly... Nothing has changed with this reel at all. There's no looseness. Uh, there's no noise when reeling. If you hear that right now, it's just because this line's hitting as it goes around. Uh, the drag is just as smooth as when I got it. Uh, no parts have broken. I, I honestly thought there'd be something. The whole time I've been using it, I've been waiting to find the reason why this reel is so cheap, other than it's made in China. But you can still get really expensive reels made in China. So I, was, I figured they had to skimp on something. And I haven't taken this reel apart yet, uh, so I don't know what it's like inside, but I know that I've put it through its paces with some really big fish. And at the end of this video, I'll show you a couple clips of some of the bigger fish that I caught on it, not to show them off the fish I caught, just to show what this thing's capable of, um, just to, you know, give you a little bit more proof that it can actually handle big fish. But uh, yeah, I fish at least once a week all year round. In the summer, uh, it's usually two to three times a week uh, for big flatheads, big blue cats, and even channel cats. And this thing has not let me down. So let me take it apart and show you some of the innards. Uh, I'm not the best at this. You know, you can find better real uh, reviews and like internal part reviews and people can give you the exact names for everything. What I really want to do is show you what it looks like after a year of solid abuse. And I mean abuse. I don't take care of these reels. You can see it's dirty. I don't grease them. Uh, they stay in the back of my truck or in my boat. They get rained on. They get shad slime and catfish slime, uh, dirt, all that. So one of the reasons why I switched to this over my Abu Garcia's which I absolutely love. Um, I've never had any issues with them, but like I said, this has more line capacity. It's only slightly bigger. It's uh, it's kind of like in between the 6,500 and the 7,000 uh, size. Like it's just perfect for big catfish. I can put, I use 30 pound mono and I fit more than enough line on there. I don't know exactly how much. I get big spools and I just put it on until it's full, but there's tons of line on here. Uh, you could probably even put 40 pound with no problem on there and still have enough. Uh, like I said, the drag is really, really good. It's super smooth. It doesn't like catch as it's coming out. It's just a very smooth uh, drag. Uh, like I said, I haven't taken it apart. I'm going to be doing that soon. But no issues with the drag. There's more than enough power to stop any fish. Uh, the clicker, I can do that real quick. It's... That might be one of the few drawbacks. It's sometimes a little hard to get off, and I, I've run into that with other reels. 
but when you're fighting a fish you kind of have to like get it in a sweet spot to get it off uh, if you're using the clicker feature I don't do it too much but it's loud you know let me uh pulled it let me pull this some line out here for you guys so you can hear the clicker So plenty of volume there. You'll hear it over any current or background noise. And it's it's kind of a unique sound. It's a little bit different than some of the other clickers out there. So if you're running multiple reels, you would know the difference between which reel is going. Okay, so the next thing, push button. It's simple, but it's sturdy. It doesn't have any play in there. It feels like it's gonna last. Uh, no complaints there. The line guide has its own it's got two little bars right there uh, there's a little bit of slop in it I haven't taken it apart to see uh, how it's installed but I'm sure there's just some kind of locking ring there uh, I haven't had any issues with this like I said a little bit of slop but nothing crazy that's pretty much it on the outside oh the power handle feels right it's a it's a good size it looked a little big at first but it actually feels really good in the hand it's uh, just comfortable it, it's nice when you have a big fish on I never thought a power handle did much but it, I, I do like that uh, you guys some of you might be wondering how it's built on the bottom it's riveted on here it's not welded um, but you know I've caught a lot of 40s and 50 pound fish on this and so far nothing's cracking nothing's bending really I don't see anything to worry about they're actually pretty beefy rivets one thing I want to mention before we go any further, uh, I have a real big problem with reels that have any kind of slop when I, I try to reel backwards. And there is almost nothing on this. After a whole year, you can see just the slightest little bit of movement backwards. It's, it's uh, instant anti-reverse is actually really good. Um, that, that's something that's always bothered me on some of these reels uh, that you know, you're reeling and then you just stop and there's a little bit of play there. This one has virtually none. I'm really happy with it. All right, so I'm gonna take this apart for the first time now. Uh, so you're gonna see it as I see it. So start off with this. It's built just like uh, pretty much any other bait cast and reel. Phillips. Take that locking ring off. Uh, the best size I found was actually a, a number 10 metric wrench. For this uh, this nut right here. All right, looks like we got a little locking ring. I hate these things, but I know they need them. Getting them off is a pain. You usually shoot them across the room, and there's a there's a washer behind it too. So let's see if I can get this off without losing it. Okay. So just take that off. There's only one washer. Yep. Some. Oh, that shot across. Uh, there's only one small washer there. I don't know if you guys can see it on the GoPro, but sometimes they have two. That one's really thin. That, oh, there's that's different. They got another kind of like a shim there that goes underneath the washer. Handle pops off. Then you got this piece. Remember how it goes? So it was down. The angles actually go down. Set that on the cloth. Then we got a piece here. Let's see. So that looks like uh, the clicker for the drag, letting you know that you're tightening it. it does want to pop off. That'll be fun to get back on. Oh, there goes uh, another. Man, this thing's got little shims everywhere. So this little piece right here goes in there. And it goes on like so. And there's another. There's, I wouldn't call that a washer. I'll call, or a shim. I'll call that a washer. Oh my god, they're everywhere. So you got another one. So... Try to keep them in order. So now I'm going to just loosen these little thumb screws. 
This reel is filthy. Like I said, I haven't done this yet. I haven't cleaned it. I haven't done anything with it other than fish with it. So you get to see me lose everything when I take this apart, probably, in real time. Try to keep these pieces together. There we go. Okay, before I dive into the whole drag and everything like that, we'll just do a quick look here. Man, it's even anodized blue on the inside. So, this is part of your centrifugal braking, I think that's what they call it. I'm not a technical guy. I'm just reviewing a reel that I like. So, there's a bearing in there. Super smooth. There's a bearing here. There's a bearing in this that's super smooth. This thing does have a lot of bearings, and I really thought that'd be the, the first thing to go. I figured it's Chinese bearings. It's not going to last very long. It's going to get noisy and rough. So far, so good. They sound just like when I got it. This is where it's going to go bad, I think. Because there could be a lot of pieces in here, some springs. There's usually two or three springs that can go, and I can feel it already. Alright, so I had to cut that. My wife came downstairs, and I feel stupid talking to a camera for some reason. So, uh, three springs. You got to watch these. Uh, most reels have this. It just kind of keeps tension on everything. It has something to do with uh, your uh, release mechanism. Probably shouldn't have done that. I don't know how to release it while it's open. Crap. <laughs> Let's see. I guess reel it. There you go. Uh, but it's actually surprisingly clean in here still after all that use. The grease still looks good. I probably won't do anything with it because the more I mess with it, the more chance I'm going to have of putting it together wrong. So, But I will take this off and show you guys what the drag looks like because that's pretty important. I know a lot of people worry about that, uh, especially with these reels that are a little bit cheaper you, you want to know what you're getting for that money and why it's cheaper so i'm just going to take this mechanism off here show you the the washers inside so let's see we got one two uh the carbon fiber washers on this side and one on that side they're still in pretty good shape i know you guys can't see it because I'm not taking it all the way apart. This piece didn't want to come off and I'm not going to force it. But uh, yeah, I don't really see any wear and tear on it. And it's it's caught quite a few fish. Some really good ones too. I'm not bragging or trying to show off them just, just for uh, purposes of a review. It, it's caught a lot of big fish and just a lot of fish in general. And I've been snagged a lot and you know cranked down on the drag and was pulling and Really, I'm, I'm impressed with how good that looks. It doesn't look like it's been used at all, really. So, there's a little tab there, too. It looks like it's got to fit in. So, sorry if you're looking for a more in-depth, like, breakdown of this. I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. A lot of guys are using it. I don't want to go any further with that, because I'm going to destroy my reel if I do. So, let's put this back together here. Um, before I do that, Mostly metal pieces, all brass where it needs to be. Every reel I've ever taken apart has plastic here that I can remember. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe one of them has brass there, but I don't think it really needs to be metal. I'm not worried about seeing that. Um, I am a little concerned about how thin that piece is. I don't know what it does. It's just kind of like a spacing piece. But uh, yeah, nothing I'm really concerned about in here. And just in case you're wondering, I am not sponsored by PC Fun. Uh, this is a small channel, no one's sponsoring a channel this small, uh, and I probably wouldn't take it anyway, but all right, let's get it put back together here. All right, so now we're going to check out the rest of the reel here. Uh, take this, I should be able to get it out, I got quite a bit of line on here, but yeah, I got it out. And uh, filthy cage, but pretty standard design there, nothing like ooh wow. So this piece that I was talking about earlier, it's got a little bit of play. It's just, it's well secured. It's got a washer and one of those lock rings there. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna take this apart. Looks like it's got the plastic gear in there. Well, let me see, can you guys see that? Get this light on here for you. So it's got a plastic gear 
that's actually not a bad thing and I'll explain that in a little bit but just three screws on this side that one's already loose definitely need to pay more attention to my reels okay so that's different I've never seen that before it's actually got a plate a lot of times it'll all be connected to this but really the only thing on this is the clicker that slides back and forth just the thing that engages the clicker uh, everything else is put on here so uh, to get it apart I don't yeah it's not riveted so you could just slide this out okay so you got three spacing bushings there and then you got a bearing in there and this is also on a bearing you can tell just because of the way it, it wants to keep spinning but a plastic gear isn't the worst thing that drives your your level wind here and from what I've heard they put plastic uh, gears on there in case your finger were to get stuck in here I just lost that shim but if your finger got stuck in here this could actually break so your finger doesn't get pinched and destroyed uh, also I think it's something to do with casting the lighter gear helps or something I'm like I said I'm not a technical guy but from what I've read having a plastic gear is not a bad thing in that location it's got a, a brass one here and uh, there goes another shim that's your clicker yeah that's pretty much your your reel there hey just something I noticed from putting back together these shims are different sizes so I think these two are a little bit shorter and this one's a little bit taller and I couldn't get the cap back on I couldn't figure out why and then I realized I had these two mixed up so if you're having a hard time getting this cap back on that's the issue and you'll know if you got them in the right order because there's uh you'll actually see these little pieces of rod sticking up above this plate uh, before I had this one was uh, it was just flush like that you could it, it wasn't uh, lining up so that's a quick little tip I just found out save you some time all right so another tip I found by trial and error uh, this it's a bearing but it's also your in, er, instant anti-reverse if you put it in the wrong way like I had like this you're not gonna be able to reel um, at all you'll see there's a little collar kind of around the end that goes in towards the reel I actually had to look at the schematics to figure out what I was doing wrong so that's got to go in this way or else you're not gonna be able to reel it fits right in there like that <laughs> that was stopping me from being able to reel and when I had it back together all right, yeah, back together, everything's there. Like I said, pretty smooth still. I didn't screw it up too bad. Uh, I, like I said, I don't take these apart too often because I don't trust myself putting them back together. Um, that probably doesn't say much about this review. Uh, the main goal of this review wasn't to show you the guts and everything. I wanted to show you what they looked like after a year of abuse. Uh, this thing is like a tank for a $60, sub $60 reel. It is built like a tank. It's uh, withstood a lot of big fish and it's gonna withstand a lot more. Uh, I'll update this in the comments if I find any issues with them, you know, through the years, but I'm really happy with it so far. All right, so now that that part's over, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed the breakdown of the reel. I know that wasn't the best. It's not really my specialty. Uh, like I said, I'm not a very technical person, but at least it'll show you what the innards look like after over a year of abuse. Um, I'm going to show you some more clips here at the end, not to show off my, the big fish I caught, but just show off what this reel is capable of to further prove that I'm not just blowing smoke up your butt. Uh, like I said, I'm not sponsored by PC Fun. They didn't give me any of these reels or anything like that. Bought them with my own money, and I'm just trying to give you an honest review. So here's some of the, uh, the fish that these reels have brought in over the past year, year and a half. Thanks for watching, guys. Good. Yep. That's a good one too. All right. Yeah, he's not bad. 
Oh yeah, free counter. I still can't see him. He's got some weight to him. It's a flatty. That's not the one I just cast. I was out there. He's way out there in the shallow stuff. Oh my God. You guys can see the amount of current we're, we're fishing right now. It's insane. Sorry, right, I thought he was gonna take some more drag, so I put the clicker on. Oh no, did he get in that line? That's a fish. He's he's holding his own in this stuff here. Oh, man, he's heavy. All right, I'm gonna bring him up here. No, maybe not. There he goes. <laughs> it's not a baby flatty at all. He's taking drag going up river in severe current. <laughs> Chad. Yeah. Another one. One last look. 36 pounds. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's on there. I take it. Wow, this one's quite good. He got big at the boat. Oh, he's hooked. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, he's beefy. 37, 38 pounder, something like that. He's tripping. <laughs> he's tripping. I was like, what? why that noise? Oh, God, he's on there. Oh, my God, guys. He's just about a collar. Yeah. You were literally really He's up. still going. Oh my God. Let's see what we got. Coming up here. Swimming up river for sure. Yeah. And now he's now he's deciding to go. <laughs> they always look smaller in the water. Yep. Right? And he looks pretty good, so he has quick tail too. He's not done yet. Woo. There we go, guys. I don't have to drag that light anymore either. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Got enough. Look at that bend, man. He is just taking it. <laughs> Look at that, man. He, he is not giving up here at the boot. Yeah! It might be 50 minutes. That looks pretty good. Yeah, yeah this one's got some weight to him. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one, guys. That's that 40 pounder I was looking for. Oh, wait. Well, that's a 45 pounder. Oh, yeah. Holy cow. Yeah, he's not a bad fish at all. Yeah, this is a good fish. This is a good fish. Woo! Yeah! Flicker going. There you go. He's taking line, ain't he? 
Nice, man. Yeah. Man, that's a good fish. I'm gonna bring in all these lines. Fighting him good, man. Yeah, he's he's taking drag. Big breakout. Let's take him. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's a hefty fish. Or I'm around something. I don't know what I'm, what I got going on here. Oh, this is freaking heavy. Whatever it is. Bale. Oh my God, this thing is big. Oh, this is a big, big fish. Oh my God. I thought it was hung up, but it's just solid weight, guys. This thing is huge. Like absolutely huge. Oh my God. You're gonna get some clicker noise here because I think he's gonna, when he realizes what's going on, I think he's gonna take some drag. All right. Oh yeah. Holy cow, guys, this thing is big. This thing is huge. I'm not joking. I'm not joking here. This thing is big. It's like he just gave, oh, there he goes, there he goes. He's, he didn't like that. We don't have much current, actually. We don't have a whole lot of current, so uh, this is all fish. This is all just really mean fish. <laughs> it's been in my boat like crazy. <laughs> oh, he's coming up, fellas. Oh, yeah, there's bubbles. Oh, he's a freaking monster. He didn't like seeing those lights. I'm going to say 53 and a half. <laughs> 